happen. All right, so let's uh, let's continue on with our movies controller that we played with, um, and we had the question about adding the thumbnail. So I've already created my database. So how would I add a field to my database once I've already created it? We did this yesterday. Pardon me? A new migration, okay? So we need to right-click new um, generator, and we want to create a migration. We want to generate a migration, and we say, we give it a, a, a useful information like add thumb nail to our table name, to movies, all right? And we're going to call it thumb nail, and it's going to be of type string. All right, we say go ahead and go. That will generate the code that does not execute the migration file. All that does is generate this text file, this Ruby file for me. So you see it automatically said, okay, you must want to add a column. So I'm adding to my movies table a field name called thumbnail, and it's going to be of type string. Now, how do I execute this to make it change my database permanently? Run migrate, all right? So we do a db migrate, rake db migrate, run. That's under tools, yeah, rake task. But once you've done it, RubyMine keeps the things that you've run up here in this pull-down menu, which is really useful. Okay, so it migrated it. So now my thumbnail is in the database, but it's not in any of my forms. Uh, you guys, if you had done this in the beginning, you would have at least the fields in your in your database, right? So I'm going to change my form that is the partial so that I can add not only the image, but a thumbnail version of that image. So this is going to be called uh, thumbnail and thumbnail, right? So let's just see if I can uh, add it. Now there was one other place that I had to modify to allow it to save. you got to be kidding me. I just changed this seconds ago. All right, so now I have a place for my thumbnail. So let's go and edit the one that I already have here and add an image from my thumbnail. I don't have another image yet, so I'm just going to use the same field, the same URL. Update our movie, and what happened? Well, first of all, I don't have a place in this view to display that image. So what do I have to change, in, and where do I have to change it? In the show, okay? In the view of my movies show page, I need to add a place to display the thumbnail. Now, this all depends on whether you really want to display the thumbnail in, uh, in this page or not, right? Um, I would not. I would show the big picture of your product and the thumbnail on the index page next to the name, right? That would make more sense. All right, so <laughs> that's exactly what you want. I know we'll get there. We'll get there. All right, so now I have a place to display it, and we should be able to display it. I should have a thumbnail now, so I've got two, right? Same image, because that's what's in the database. All right, now to display it on this page, I have to edit what page? What is this page's view? The index, okay, good. So I go and look at my index page for my movies and my views folder, and I might put in a new head here that's going to be my thumb. Nail. All right? And then I need to add another one, uh, three up from the bottom right here. And instead of displaying the movie.format, I'm going to display the thumbnail.
pro property from the database. So let's start with that. Reload my page. And now my thumbnail has nothing in it. Why not? Uh, because you don't have the uh, image tag. Because when I go back to my thumbnail, it never saved it to the database. How do I tell my controller to save it to the database? In the application controller, I'm in the application slash movies controller, there was a special place at the very bottom that this was uh, where we put all of the field names that we're going to allow to save to the database. So we want to also have our thumbnail. So we're going to add our thumbnail here. That makes you think about whether or not you're, this is kind of a, a security issue. It's only allowing these field names to be stored in the database. All right? So now we can put this in here. Update our movie. Go back to back. And there we go. Now we have the text for the file name, which is close. Right? Now, how would I change that to the image instead? You're going to want to add the uh, image tag. Right. So we're going to call the image tag, and we're going to pass it the movie.thumbnail as the URL to go to. All right? That should be it. And bada boom, bada bing, got my nice little picture there. All right, does that answer your question? Okay. So this is where I would display the thumbnail. And on the view, the, the detail page, I would probably not display the thumbnail, but I would display the image here. Do you want the path, though, there? No. At least, or not? not necessarily. Okay. And this does not have to look like this. I could make this look however I want. I don't need to say that the name of this movie is Walking Dead. I could just say Walking Dead, right? I can, I can fill this out any way I want. I've got the view, again, was a scaffolding, a place that you can modify from to make it look like your product page. So it's the detailed product page. Like you go to Amazon and you look at a book, they've got stuff up here and stuff down here and all over the place. But they're pulling all that data from a database and just displaying it on the page however you want. Yep. So I think you're done. Uh, but let's make this a little nicer. Uh, instead of just having the name, wouldn't it be nice that I could click on that name and go to the show page? Wouldn't that be nice? So how do I add a link to this? Link to, very good. Link to, and I tell it uh, the name that the link to is going to be, this is the click text. Right? And then the, the click, the path. So it's the show path. What is the show path for a movie? Movie path. And that's not going to be right. So, yeah, it's a, we have to pass it uh, what movie to link to, all right? So movie path, again, was not just a variable. It was a method, remember? So we can pass information into that movie path method and tell it what movie we want to go to. Because why? Why do I just say movie? No. No. Did you really? <laughs> that must be new to me. All right, there we go. So now Walking Dead links to the show page for Walking Dead. All right, that, that must be new to just be able to do this. Um, we'll give it a shot just for Christopher there. 
Hey, look at that. So it knows enough that you want the path here, apparently, um, to go there. That's interesting. That that's, must be new in 4.0. learn something new every day. All right, so I could make all of these links to go to, to the same thing, and then I wouldn't need a show link, right? I could delete this whole column. If every thing here linked to the show page, I don't need a specific thing to link to. People know that it's a link, and I click it, it goes somewhere, right? So that would be some one way I could remove some information from my page here. And ideally, not for this assignment, but ideally when you finish and you're going to do this for production, you might take some of this information out. You know, maybe I only want the movie name and the director. Maybe the description, that's it. You know, you can, and you, they don't have to be in a table. They can be in a div, and you can do anything you want with that kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> you can do that all with jQuery. All right, any questions on that? Ow. It's 11 o'clock, by the way. Yes, question? Uh, no, it's 11 o'clock. <laughs> And so I might want to put, now this is a tricky one. If I wanted to put the link around this image tag, this is something that trips everybody up. And the reason it trips people up is because Rubyists hate parentheses. All right? Image tag is really a method. And methods, in my book, when I was growing up back in the last century, we put parentheses around them. So the problem is link to is also a method. So how do I know which of this, is this the first parameter or the second? Is this the parameter to the image tag or is it the third parameter to my link to? It's a, it's a problem, right? That's why we put parentheses around this, right? So this is the click text. That's going to be the click text, right? So I like to do it explicitly put my parentheses around that. I now know that is a method. And this will also be a method that has another optional parameter of the path, right? Which would, in this case is just the movie. So that's what it would look like if I wanted to make the image clickable. That one messes people up all the time. Yeah, <laughs> algebra. <laughs> All right, so let's go look at this. Uh, now I can click on, see how it's, it's clickable? Wow, is that sweet? Look at that. Nice. All right. Now, uh, any questions on basically formatting, anything like that? We'll talk a little more about formatting some of this information, but it would be nice if we could have some fake data so that we don't have to keep adding movies to our site or blogs or products, right? Let's add some fake data to our system. And who's better at creating fake data than Ruby itself, right? We can use the Ruby language to create fake data. All right, so there is this file in the database folder. If I can find the database folder, called seeds.rb. And if you open it, it doesn't have anything in it but some comments. All right, so this is contains record creation needed to seed the database. Seeding means to put in some information that your application needs to run. Uh, we need to seed it with information. Uh, and you don't want to manually type all of this stuff in. So there are some, there are two different ways of creating uh, records. We can use this uh, seeds.rb file, or we can create our own rake task. The rake task is a little more difficult to do, so I'm going to do it in the seeds file, but you'll see religious wars online about the seeds file should not be used to create fake data. All right, too bad. It works good. I'm going to stick with it. So uh, 
how do we, uh, it gives you an example of how we create data, right? We call the create method on the model that we want to create data from. So uh, let's, uh, just like we did in, in the uh, data console, remember the, uh, the Rails console? We were able to create a new record in the model when we had the people, remember that? So we can do the same thing. I want to create a new movie, and I'm going to call the create method, and I pass it in all the data that I need to create a new record. So I need to have a title, and that's going to be something like Dave's book, and I need an author, which is going to be something like Dave, and I need, uh, it's actually not title, what is it? So I forget what my thing is, so I always go back to my uh, schema file. The schema is all of the tables that I've created. And so I've got name, director, so I'm going to just copy this so that I can go play with it all in here. All right, so I have a name, so this is not title, it's name. My author is director. My description, yeesh, is uh, one long movie. My uh, year is going to be something like 2013. My length is going to be something like uh, 100, yep, and my format is going to be something like uh, <laughs> beta, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, nicely formatted, beautiful, right? So that creates a movie. And we can, let's, let's just print it out from this. We can say puts, right, movie.inspect to see if it actually created the movie for us. All right? So how do we run this? Well, there's a rake task for that, right? There's a rake task for everything. So we run a rake task, and we look at the db seed task, and we say run. And we could run it in the different environments if I wanted to, but the default is, is uh, de development. And we'll see if I have any errors here. DB seed, yeah, DB colon seed. All right, so it created this movie ID. It gave it an ID of three, so I know that it saved it to the database. Now, if I went and looked at my my uh, page here, I just refresh this guy, I've got a new book, a new movie, and it links to Dave's book, and everything's all happy, right? I don't have a thumbnail image, but, all right, so let's do that again. Let's run it again. And it creates a new one. Now, what's the problem with this? Why did it come back nil? Because it already exists. Right. And where, how does it know that I don't want something that already exists? Validations. validations, right? So my validations are impeding my creation of data here, right? So what, what was the string, what was the field that required that? And that's in my models for my movie and uniqueness of my name and my message. I, I mean, sorry, my name of my movie cannot be the same movie. And it also validates a very in, uh, politically incorrect. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't like my message, right? So let's, uh, <laughs> let's fix that in my C's file. How can I make my Dave's book unique? Uh, change a letter. Change something, right? Uh, so. I'm going to do something like this. 
maybe. Uh, and how do I create a random number between one and a hundred? That'll work, right? So let's run it again. This is only creating one movie. So I created the fourth record, book 11. I could run it again. A loop, right, yeah. Dave's book 86. Beautiful, huh? So now when I reload my page, I should have five books in here. All different. All right. Now, it would be nice if all of this data was different, right? Wouldn't that be really nice? So, enter a gem that I believe we talked about in uh, Ruby 2. Called the linguistics gem. Remember that? Do you guys don't remember that? Yes. So, if I look up linguistics, Ruby gem. This is the gem. Let's look at the documentation. And it lets us do, remember it did the pluralization, it did the numbers. Remember the numbers to words? And I said you couldn't use that. But this lets us create all kinds of interesting stuff. Uh, plurality, bunch of uh, ipsum. Lorem Ipsum, it creates uh, just all kinds of fun stuff that we can play with, right? So let's go, let's see, it, it's new. And that's the one problem is that these all change all the time. So let's, uh, how do I add a new gem to my Rails project? So in Rails, this is one we haven't looked at for a, a week or two, but there's a file called the gem file. Remember that? <coughs> gem file is a listing of all the gems that your project requires. So all we need to do is add a gem in line in here called linguistics. And then how do we tell our project that we have changed the gems that we're using. The bundle, right? So we do the, the tools bundle install. And it will go out, get that gem if it's not there. And ours probably was already here. There it is. So mine was already installed on my system, so it's just going to be using that lin linguistics. Uh, no arguments, just uh, bundle install, and no arguments, yeah. So there's another gem that I forgot about called uh, Faker, a Faker gem, which is really useful. I don't remember if I showed you guys that one. Uh, let's look up the Faker gem, uh, uh, Faker gem. And this is a gem that creates all kinds of junk for us. It's really nice. So we can look at the docs. Um, for instance, it creates phrases for us, credit card numbers that are valid. It, we can create company names that are valid, that look like company names. We can create internet domain names that look like domain names. We can create email addresses, names that look like names. Okay, so this is really fun. Let's play with this in IRB. Uh, well, let's first install it, make sure that it installs. So we added our gem faker. We, and then what do we do again? We do the bundle install with no arguments. No arguments from the peanut gallery. And so this one, it actually has to go get that gem and install it on my system. Yeah, it is fun. Yes, yes, they're great. These are really fun.
No. That's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I'm going to require Faker inside of this. This is an IRB uh, window. And I can say, let's go look at the documentation because it changes all the time. Let's see. First name. So I can say, uh, let's say Faker. I believe it's going to be this. Faker name dot first name and every time I run that it gives me hey I got Melanie look at that oh I went up twice there we go Clinton Christ Anaya Alvera name Leland so every time I run that I get a different name isn't that cool so if I do last name I get Nicholas Becker right Yost Grady Nice kind of last name kind of thingies, right? I can do uh, things like phone numbers. Uh, let's see, where's our phone number? So I can look at the phone number class, and I can generate a cell phone number or a real phone number, all right? So let's go do that. I can say from my Faker Jam module in my phone number class, I want to run the cell phone method and generate me a cell phone. With extensions or not, right? So, all kinds of cool stuff I can do with that. Schmidt. Schmidt. Uh, that was a. Uh, there you go. There's a cell phone. So I can say Faker uh, Lorem dot uh, paragraph paragraphs and say I want three paragraphs of Lorem Ipsum. So it creates me an array with a string for each element. See that? I've got three paragraphs inside of this array of lorem ipsum garbage. Beautiful, eh? I can do uh, faker dot uh, company dot catchphrase, which is just really funny. And what this does is it takes... <laughs> It takes three different words, and it uh, puts them together. Now, what's scary is I've been at companies that have used these catchphrases. Why, why is that Exclusive radical hub. I mean, you could see somebody putting that in their mission statement for their, <laughs> for their company, right? Persistent fault-tolerant system engine. We have that. You know, that's one of their technical lines, right? You could just see that. I just love this stuff. This is great. Enterprise-wide static orchestration. It just sounds, it's good BS. There's another one called uh, BS, which is basically similar. Incentivize mission-critical supply. Now, that one, I'm, I'm sure I've seen that one out there. Well, that one actually almost makes sense. Uh, yeah, it kind of does, right? So let's, I'm, I'm just curious. I've never done this. Let's try to search for that. There you go. So, <laughs> mission critical supply chain. See, look at that. There's built into that. Awesome. That's, I'd love that. <laughs> so we can use this gem now. This Faker gem is so cool. We can use this in our DB seed file, and we'll do some. We're out of time. We'll do that tomorrow, where instead of name, we'll have it generate us a name, and a and a and a physical name and a bunch of lorem ipsum generate a random year, we can do all of that stuff. It'll and it'll all pass validations. That's right. All right. Enough for today.